Hi, I'm Drew Chavon, your Energy Specialist with the University of Maryland Extension. This video is part of our Solar Clips video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. In previous videos, we explored the use of a multimeter to measure the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current across the leads with the diodes of a solar module. But in this video, we'll expand on those common measurements to evaluate the power produced by a solar module as well as the impact of shading on the module. The terms voltage, current, and power all describe how electricity flows through a conducting wire, but each represents a different aspect of that electrical flow. An analogy between flowing electricity and flowing water can be useful in understanding each of these electrical parameters. With this analogy, an electrical force can be transmitted through a conducting wire, just as water can flow through a garden hose. So voltage is like the pressure that pushes water through the hose, current is like the flow rate of the water in the hose, and power is the total amount or volume of water that's flowing in the hose at a given time. So voltage measures how strongly the electricity is being forced through the wire and is measured in volts. Voltage is often a good indicator of the compatibility of different system components. For instance, a 12 volt appliance can typically be connected to a 12 volt battery. Current, on the other hand, describes how much electricity is flowing through the conducting wire and is measured in amps. In the garden hose analogy, a wider hose will allow more water to flow through, just as a heavier gauge of wire will transmit more electricity. For this reason, amp ratings are helpful in determining the size of conducting wires needed to connect electrical components. A large appliance, for instance, will require a heavier gauge of wire. If the wire is not large enough to carry the load, then excess energy will be given off as heat, potentially damaging the wire in the system or possibly starting a fire. Now, power, once again, is the total amount of electricity flowing through the system. Power is commonly measured in watts and can be determined by multiplying the voltage and the current together. So you could have a small pipe with high pressure or a large pipe with low pressure, and they could each carry the same amount of water through them. The same is true for electricity. You could have a fairly light gauge wire like this one that carries a high voltage and low current, or you could have a heavier gauge wire that could potentially provide the same power output only with a lower voltage and a higher current flowing through it. And then you could have the same power flowing through each size wire. As an example, let's consider a solar module producing over 36 volts, but only 1.37 amps. If you multiply those two metrics, volts times amps, then you'll have 50 watts. Now let's say another module produces only half that voltage, around 18.6 volts, but double the current at around 2.68 amps. If you multiply those two terms together, then you'll again obtain 50 watts. In this case, both solar modules are producing the same amount of power, 50 watts, but each with different volt and amp ratings. The difference in these two systems is that one will require a heavier gauge wire to carry the higher current. The larger the amp rating, the heavier the gauge of wire needed. Now, we'll be working with this 100 watt solar module today, and we'll start by reviewing the ratings for the module that are found on its specification label on the back side. These ratings for the module are referenced under standard test conditions, or STC, which are 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degrees Celsius, 1,000 watts per square meter of irradiance, or sunlight, and an air mass of 1.5. Under those particular testing conditions, the STC, this solar module should read an open circuit voltage of 21.6 volts and a short circuit current of 6.11 amps. With that said, we might expect a reduced output today since the temperature this afternoon is somewhere around 88 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a bit higher than the standard test conditions of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you were to multiply the open circuit voltage, VOC, by the short circuit current, ISC, according to Watt's law, then you'd end up with a higher output power than what is actually reported on the label. In this case, multiplying 21.6 volts by 6.11 amps equals almost 132 watts. But that's a lot more than 100 watts quoted on the label, and it would be wrong to think that this solar module could actually generate 132 watts of solar electricity. In this case, the maximum power of 100 watts is actually based on the voltage at maximum power, VMP, and the current at maximum power, IMP, both of which have been evaluated with an electrical load connected to the module. We can check our math by multiplying the VMP, 18 volts, by the IMP, 5.55 amps, and that gives us a maximum power of 100 watts. To understand the discrepancy between these different voltages and currents, 
We need to recall how we measured the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current in previous videos using a multimeter. If you remember, open circuit voltage was measured when no load was connected to the module. In that case, the terminals were open with the incomplete circuit having no current flow. Since the current I was equal to zero, then the output power of the module was also zero watts, meaning no electrical power was generated. The short circuit current, on the other hand, was measured with the terminals shorted or connected to each other. This fully closed electrical circuit allowed for the maximum amount of current, which in this case would be 6.11 amps, but with the terminals shorted together, there is no output voltage drop. With the voltage V now equal to zero, the output power of the module was once again zero watts, meaning no electrical power was generated. So it's really important to remember how power has been defined, especially when you're performing any diagnostics on an electrical system. While the use of some diagnostic tools like this wattmeter power analyzer can be rather useful in measuring the voltage, the current, and the power generated from a solar electric system, you need to remember that no current will be flowing through the system unless the circuit has been completed by connecting an electrical load to it. For an example, we can connect a small DC motor as a load. In this case, the positive and negative leads from the solar module have been connected into the source side of the power analyzer, while the DC motor has been connected to the load side of the power analyzer. In this case, the voltage, current, and power are now reading over 22 volts, 0.13 amps, and almost 3 watts, respectively. And you can check your math by multiplying the 22 volts by 0.13 amps to get a power of about 2.8 watts. So usable electric power is only generated when the solar module is connected to an electric load, which can vary from infinite resistance all the way down to zero resistance. The maximum power, PM or Pmax, will be generated somewhere between these two extremes, but we'll trust the value that's reported on the label itself, in this case 100 watts, since we don't have time in this video to evaluate the electrical power of variable resistance loads. So once again, we can see on the label a maximum power of 100 watts, which occurs at a voltage VMP of 18 volts and a current IMP of 5.55 amps. And we can verify this value for maximum power, PM, by multiplying the VMP times the IMP. This will give us a value close to 100 watts. Now we'll assess the voltage, current, and power of this 100 watt module today with and without shading. But as we get started with these measurements, please remember that solar modules are live when they're exposed to sunlight with the potential to cause injury from sparking. So exercise some care when you start any electrical work with them. Now with no load connected, we're reading over 21 volts and about 5.6 amps. Under these conditions, we have a power that's hypothetically 118 watts. That's when you multiply 21 volts by 5.6 amps. Now we'll take some time to consider how any shading that you might have on your module will impact the amount of power that it's producing. So we'll start by shading a few solar cells across the bottom row of the module. In this case, you'll see that the voltage has not changed very much with a value still around 19 to 20 volts, but the current has now dropped to about one amp. And if we continue to cast shade across the bottom row of the module, then the current will continue to decline, now going all the way down to 0.6 amps. As a result, the power will also drop significantly because power equals voltage times current. In this case, the output of the module would now be around 12 watts. So even though the voltage did not drop very much, the power could be greatly reduced due to the reduced current. We went from a hypothetical power of 132 watts without any shading down to 12 watts with shading along the bottom row of the module. Now let's repeat this process in another region of the solar module. In this case, we'll assess the impact from shading across the middle region of the module. With shading across this central region of the module, the voltage is still at about 19 volts, but the current has dropped even lower to about 0.3 amps, while it started at over 5 amps. As a result of this significantly reduced current, the power output of the module would be greatly reduced to only about 5.7 watts. So again, we would drop from a hypothetical power of about 132 watts without shading to about 5.7 watts with shading across the central area on the module. So this demonstrates how even partial shading will greatly reduce the current that's flowing through the system, while the voltage is impacted to a lesser extent. This is because the solar cells in the module are wired in series. 
If one of the cells is shaded, then the entire series will be affected. For this reason, it's important to understand how even partial shading will significantly decrease the power output. Now, if you have solar modules wired in series with one another, then any shading that you have on an individual module will certainly impact the other modules that are wired in series with it. Well, I'm Drew Chavon with the University of Maryland Extension, and I hope this video has helped you to understand how to assess solar module power and the impacts of shading. You can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of the Solar Clips video series. But in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar photovoltaics and other energy-related topics.